Welcome back to The Upper Room, where we try to give weekly encouragement and coaching to disciples of Jesus who are trying to live faithfully and fruitfully in our world today. This month's theme is Cleanse the Temple, and it comes right out of our study of Luke, the scene where Jesus goes blasting into the temple courts, throwing tables over and chasing out all the people who've turned God's temple into a den of thieves when it was meant to be a house of prayer. That is such a powerful moment. Of course, the Sadducees, who we talked a lot about on Sunday, were not happy as these markets, merchants, and vendors brought in big money for them. And they practically scream at Jesus, by what authority are you doing this? They don't know who they're talking to, do they? Who's being worshipped in the temple? God the Father. And who's the one chasing off things that have corrupted the temple? Jesus, God's Son. By what authority, Jesus could have asked? How about my dad's authority? Good enough for you? Jesus had every right to cleanse the temple, and he has every right to cleanse our temples as well, bringing up 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20 again, where Paul writes, Do you not know that our bodies, or that your bodies, are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you receive from God? You're not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Jesus has authority to cleanse our temples because it's his Holy Spirit living in us. And because as Christians, we're not our own anymore. We belong to Jesus. He ransomed us from sin and death, and he enabled us to be born again. As we've studied this, the idea of authority has only grown in my mind by the day. If you want your temple cleansed, you must bring your life under the authority of Jesus. I want to do some spiritual things like a spiritual workout to cleanse my temple. And God will bless our efforts. But ultimately, we'll never get to where we're at, where, where we are to be if we don't surrender to the authority of Jesus. Most Christians I meet have no trouble giving the right answer verbally. Who's in charge of my life? Jesus. Who's the boss of me? Jesus. What's the final authority in my life? Jesus and God's word. On an easy day, when everything's going my way, surrendering to the authority of God is easy. But where I think every Christian can struggle is when what we want and what God is calling us to don't align. At a previous church, our senior pastor's wife once told me something I'll never forget. She was talking about submitting to God, and she said this, Submission isn't submission when you both agree. That's agreement. Submission is when what you want and what God wants don't line up. At that juncture is where submission comes into play. If you and someone else agree to an issue, that's not submission, that's agreement. Submission happens when there's an impasse, and then we are the ones who give in to the higher authority. From my seat in the church, I can see literally hundreds and hundreds of Christians, all in different stages of growth in their relationships with Christ. You know what I see in so many of us? Partial submission. We submit decent percentages of our lives to Jesus, but almost all of us, if not all of us, still have some areas where if push came to shove, we might choose our will over God's. I want to find those areas in my heart. I want to root them out, rip them out, and get myself 100% surrendered. At our men's retreat this past weekend, Andy Abramson, our speaker, told a fascinating story of something he experienced early in his youth ministry career. He was a greenhorn. He was a rookie. And he was pretty na- pretty naive, he said, about the nature of his work. There was a parent who was very upset about something that involved her daughter. This lady and her family were pretty prominent in the church. They were known for being big Christians in the community. This mom was upset about something. And when she told Andy's wife, Jen, the way she wanted something to be handled, Jen innocently replied, that doesn't sound like the biblical way to handle this. And then this woman instantly blasted back, I don't care what the Bible says. There it is. When push came to shove, when life stopped being easy and simple and instead got a little hard and complicated, and when the rubber met the road with one of her kids, at that moment, in her own words, she revealed a tough truth about herself. I don't care what the Bible says. I want my way to be the only way. I look back on the regrets I have had in my life since being a Christian. Almost all of them came came from times where under pressure or under intense personal desire, 
I didn't care what the Bible said. I wanted what I wanted. I needed what I needed. And it was shockingly easy to just seal up God's word in an airtight, soundproof bubble so I couldn't hear it and then do what I felt I should do to my own later regret and in some cases to my own shame. We're only as mature as we're surrendered. You may know a lot about the Bible, but the real mark of maturity is how much of that Bible knowledge is practiced. And the real test is what comes out of us when we're truly under pressure. While it's not hard to spot compromise in each other, sometimes it's hard to spot it in ourselves. By the grace of God, we're talking about this today. The Spirit wants to lead us into health and holiness. He wants to cleanse the temple. Are you aware of any crooked way inside you? Are there commands from Scripture that you are flat out not obeying? It's a no-fly zone with you. Don't even bring up that verse or that idea or that command. I'm not going there. The Holy Spirit wants you to go there. We're so wor- uh, so busy worrying about the specks in everyone else's eyes where there could be a, a plank of rough lumber jetting out of our own eyes. The assignment again this week is very similar to the very first week of this mini-series. But because we've reflected on who's in charge and who the final authority is, I think to be healthy, we need to take a deeper look. This week, spend time with God. Ask Him to show you the areas where you are refusing to surrender. Bring this up with your D-group if you're in a D-group. This could be a project you all take on together. God bless you, Upper Room. Surrender all and live free.